G'day and welcome back. We're back uh, into the Mini again and uh, today's activities uh, will be focused on getting pistons, conrods, big end bearings in. Uh, I need to get that done before I can get the rest of the front of the motor assembled. Uh, you need to do that because you need to be able to have um, number one on top dead centre um, in order to line up the timing marks correctly. So what I've got here is the uh, the press is all set up. Um, this is the way I'm going to be pushing the wrist pins out of the um, the old Conrod piston setup. Um, I've added these blocks of wood uh, because the piston's round, cylindrical. Let me just go get one. Okay. So because we're cylindrical, it's going to have the tendency to try and spread um, those two plates apart, so I just don't want that to happen. So um, I've got the other part of the setup to press these out um, is just an old socket. It fits um, it fits through there, it'll fit through the, um, the small end of the conrod, uh, and of course we'll be pressing it out like that. So I'll set you up and I'll just give you a, a quick look. So I'm just going to bring this down just lightly so it'll hold itself and then I'm going to eyeball to make sure that's completely level and then we can just uh, bring the thunder really I guess there we go so reminder that the um, wrist pin and the piston in this process are sacrificial because they're the old ones. Um, clearly you don't want to do any damage to the, um, the conrod to the small end. So the reverse process of putting the new ones on is quite different. Uh, these are um, clearly a press fit to the small end, um, but not press fit. So you heat the uh, small end up and um, while it's still pretty hot but not uh, not glowing um, you uh, position the new wrist pins in the new pistons and then when it all cools down it locks up and you've got your uh, interference fit here we go there we have it number one. Okay, so I'm going to do all of these in the same manner and um, bring you back when it's time to apply some heat. Okay, so this is where we're at. I've got all of the conrods now separated from the old pistons and, and wrist pins. Uh, next step of the process is getting the new pistons and wrist pins on. Now you'll see here that the, um, the wrist pins are a, a smooth fit. Uh, within the piston and the wrist pin is an interference fit on the small end of the conrod. So we can't press uh, press fit wrist pins into the small end. The only way really to do that, to do this is to use heat, enough heat to expand uh, that's, that small end, giving you a few seconds to, uh, to slide the wrist pin in. Now of course when you think about it um, you need to accurately judge where on this um, wrist pin that's going to go because as you can see there's clearance on either side. So uh, what we need to do is work out how far, uh, how far in the wrist pin needs to be with the conrod small end hard up against one of these shoulders because that's going to give you an accurate um, uh, position uh, so so that when you push the wrist pin in within those few seconds you'll get it in the exact position and so that calls for a jig here's one I've made earlier now this is my vise and I've got the new 
piston in here, older piston and old wrist pin and a uh, Jubilee clip here. So what the Jubilee clip does is it stops this wrist pin from moving any further this way and gives you the opportunity then to get a accurate measurement between this wrist pin and the new wrist pin so that when you slide in you can uh, you can get a very accurate measurement so how to calculate this distance here is as follows so as mentioned earlier there's clearance on either side of that so what we need to know is what one of those clearances in is if they are both exactly the same so um, if we measure from here from the shoulder to here and then subtract the width of the small end we'll get the total overall clearance that the small end has within this space here then all we need to do is divide that by two and you'll have um, you'll have what one of the two clearances is and that means that you can slide it that distance that you've measured and then when it's and when the small end is hard up against here and it sets there when we move it back it's uh, exactly in the right position I hope that makes sense it's not it's not entirely intuitive so um, what I've done is I've measured uh, measured here so this is uh, 26 millimeters exactly between here and here uh, the width of this is 22.25 so when we subtract those two we get 3.75 millimeters in total overall clearance um, halving that gives us 1.875 so this needs to be 1.875 millimeters um, from the uh, this this end of the wrist pin to the shoulder here of the of the piston so um, that brings us to the next quandary I suppose how do you measure that uh, that distance accurately well we fall back to feeler gauges and these are all of my feeler gauges all laid out and so what we're looking for is a combination of these 12 uh, feeler gauges that give us 1.875 millimeters so that we can then put feeler gauges down in there and get the exact measurement hoping that still makes sense I haven't lost everybody so how do you work out what combination well I thought about this long and hard it's a it's a mathematical problem and uh, I turned to chat GPT which um, some of you may have heard of by now it's an AI program and what I, I asked it a question I said um, given the following um, sets of measurements find me a combination of those measurements which will give me 1.875 millimeters and I was genuinely surprised so I punched in you know 0 0.457 0 0.330 0 0.381 which is the the um, millimeter dimension of the all these feeler gauges so I put all 12 in and it spat out four it said this is your four ideal um, measurements that you'll need and they they add up to 1.880 millimeters which is 0 0.005 millimeters uh, different from what I need which is absolutely negligible um, so um, with these all together and I measured them with um, again I measured this with a feeler gauge just to double check um, we can go in here and precisely um, precisely measure that distance so this is this is the jig I'd done a little bit of research on YouTube and some of the solutions to this problem were, were let's just say labor intensive and overly, overly complicated um, this in my mind is actually a, um, a very very simple uh, jig using what we've just got lying around so um, this is what we used to so uh, next step will be getting my temperature gun out need to make sure um, I'm getting the right temperature in the end of that small end don't want to ruin them and uh, we'll take that from there so in my last video which was the model 2 video I alluded to the fact that I was waiting on some parts for the mini now the parts I was waiting on have arrived and uh, they are a new set of pistons so why do I need a new set of pistons I had four perfectly good ones I now only have three perfectly good ones as a result of a failed uh, attempt to install the wrist pin uh, so what happened was 
I was very carefully uh, heating up the small end of the con rod and unfortunately um, I only got it part of the way through before it cooled and uh, then of course I had to press the pin back out and as a result of that caused some pretty solid um, damage to this inner, let's call it a race, uh, of the piston. Screwed it up basically and that's, that's it for that set. Now what turned out to be a bit of a blessing in disguise is that when I hopped online looking for replacements, I actually stumbled across a site that had um, surplus uh, stock and this is surplus stock of the era that these, um, that these uh, original pistons would have come from. Uh, so I've got a full set, they, they've come with uh, rings installed and everything and uh, I might just take a, just a couple minutes just to talk you through the differences that I've discovered. Uh, first and foremost is that they are very, very similar to the old ones. So you can see there's, there's quite a deep skirt in comparison to these Chinese ones. Um, that's the first, the first thing. The second thing is that ch these Chinese ones only have uh, two compression rings, whereas the new ones uh, have three, just like the old ones. Uh, and also somewhat crucially is what I did notice that um, there's no oil holes um, to lubricate that pin at all. So I was wondering at the time um, how they get oil. Potentially it splashes up and hits this and then somehow finds its way in. Uh, but the new ones have uh, oil holes uh, top and bottom. So that's going to get an almost constant flow of, um, of oil there. Uh, I also note that the, there's a, a machined uh, groove in here on the skirt. I'm not entirely sure what that does. Um, it is what it is, I suppose. So that's pretty much a win, in my opinion. And they're only 200 bucks, so, you know, didn't break the bank. Uh, and I'm saying goodbye to these... Um, what I would say fairly cheap and nasty made in China jobs. Not that there's anything wrong with China, just uh, these are new old stock made in Britain, um, potentially off um, maybe even original tooling for the original pistons. So happy days. Now, um, thinking long and hard about, so thinking long and hard about what went wrong in the process, um, what went wrong was I only have two hands and trying to install the pin, I'm relying on the fact that the small end of the rod is hot enough but not too hot uh, and I've got time to, to get it on. Now it took a little more than three seconds for it to cool enough to, um, to cause problems. And um, I looked at a whole bunch of other YouTube clips and you've got guys that have the little uh, furnaces um, you know, also have guys that are heating the small end up until it's a, a pink or sorry, very dull, uh, glow. Um, my opinion, uh, too hot. And, uh, and then I thought, well, how can I do this uh, without taking to machine shop? That's the, that's the logical uh, thing to do, uh, as well It's the logical option. Uh, I thought, why don't I get someone just to help me? <laughs> um, and that's probably something that, uh, you guys can consider just get someone to hold the torch. And uh, just keep the torch on the, the small end uh, while you're doing uh, doing the job, and uh, that's going to avoid uh, any any issues with it cooling off. So that's my intent. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, fingers crossed. I'm really hoping so. I don't want to ruin another you know two hundred dollars set of pistons, uh, but uh, I can't see how that will fail. I've got the split pins. I'm sorry, split pins. I've got the uh, wrist pins currently in the freezer. I'm going to bring them down to you know, freezer temperature minus 18 degrees Celsius or whatever it is. And, uh, and then bring my lovely wife down to the workshop and see if I can't get her hands dirty holding the, uh, holding the blowtorch while, uh, while I get those pins on. So that's, that's where we're at. Um, somewhat regretting having to spend extra money, but as I said, may, may be in a blessing in disguise. I've got probably better pistons than I started with. Oh, the other thing to mention, uh, the new pistons, um, they're, they're both, the, the Chinese ones and the new ones are both standard size, uh, but the um, the new pistons are about 0.4 of a millimeter bigger um, in uh, in diameter, which is excellent for my application. Um, uh, getting standard pistons was a little bit of a stretch uh, in terms of uh, my bore size. 
I, I could have uh, probably bought out and gone for a 20 thou over, uh, but this, uh, this will actually um, have me much more comfortable with what I've got going on there. So anyway, I'm going to set you guys up and, uh, and crack on. Okay, as preparations continue to, uh, to kick off the, uh, the hot part of the process, uh, I've just labelled the conrods uh, appropriately so they get pressed on the right way around. These are directional, so as you can see here, there's an angled part of the conrod. Um, one and two are oriented the same way. Uh, this is the front of the engine, so timing chain side. Um, one and two angled, angled to the inside, and three and four also angled to the inside. So um, that could clear up for anyone um, that orientation. So what I've done is I've marked these with an F. So they've all got obviously the F on this side. And uh, I've marked all the pistons as well with F because these uh, also have a specific orientation. It's, it's marked front um, there on the piston. Okay, so I thought I'd show that before we kick off. Okay, so that went really smoothly to a point. So we we got three on without too much of a drama. Um, however, the last one, which incidentally happened at the third attempt, um, guess what I did? I pressed this pin through the conrod. What's wrong with this pin? belongs in bloody Chinatown. That's the pin for the Chinese one. This is the pin for the English one. It's longer. So I right royally screwed up. Consequence was pushing the pin back out again. You can see the dimple here. More importantly, it crushed the uh, the ring lands there, and that's a that's a broken piece of ring in here. So that's toast. I've had to unfortunately order another set. It's kind of sad, but it is what it is. Note to self: get rid of anything related to old pistons in your work area. Otherwise, you can confuse them. That was botched. Well, that folks is it. Two sets of new pistons to make one set. And uh, they're all on extremely accurately, if I do say so. So um, the next thing to do, uh, I've got some ARP rod bolts coming. And what I want to do when I get those is I've got a set of uh, really accurate uh, scales uh, an assembly like this, including the uh, big end cap and the bolts, is roughly a kilo, so this is a digital scale that um, can take, I think, three kilos, down to 0.1 of a millimetre difference. And just to give you an idea, so I'll just pick, I'll just pick one, and uh, you can see that's 827.9, and the next one, is 845 you know so that's um what, what does 827 so it's 
18, 18 grams difference just in those two assemblies. So the exercise will be just to balance them all in a reciprocating four cylinder. Um, it's not like a V8 because you have a posing and a flat plane. Uh, the forces of two of the pistons cancel out two of the others, which means that you can balance all this assembly and it won't affect crank balance at all. So it'll just improve the overall balance of the engine. Whereas in a V8, if you start screwing around trying to balance assemblies um, and you don't balance uh, with the crank, it can throw you out. It can actually make it worse. So anyway, uh, that's that part. That was hair raising. I didn't enjoy it. Would I take it to a machine shop to get it done next time? Y yes. Yes, I would. So that's my recommendation. Go to a machine shop. They know what they're doing. Okay, so as we get started, I thought I'd give you a, a graphic illustration as to why you don't mix your big end bearing caps um, with your conrods, that you have to keep them in, in factory pairs. You can almost see why here. Um, this cap has got a lot of material removed to balance it, um, compared with this one at the end, which is quite shallow. Um, so I've rank ordered these by weight and these by weight just to show you that you know, at worst, um, you could have, oh, scales just turned off, hello, okay, so that's 977.9, and that's 1011 grams. 0.5. So you're looking at uh, 34, 34 grams difference, which is phenomenal. So what I'll do now is I'll put the camera down and um, match them. Um, you know, I've, I've marked these, so this is number three. You can probably see three dots on that. I'll match them and then reweigh them, and you'll see um, how close they are. Okay, so number four. 9934 3 oh, nine, five, seven. so it's only 2.3 grams number 2 okay that one's 3.8 grams. And that one's 2.2 2 grams. So, um, so the objective will be to get the rod bolts out as well and weigh them at the same time and, and match them all together. And, uh, and then I'll just be taking just a little bit of weight off to bring it to 9934. Well, We'll reweigh again with the rod bolts, find what the lightest combination is, and then bring those others down to that spec. Okay, so I've weighed all of the new ARP rod bolts and obviously nuts. Um, they are all identical, which is excellent. And um, I've also weighed all the bearing shells. The bearing shell um, I put on number three here is just 0.1 of a gram lighter uh, than all of the rest. Sorry, heavier than all of the rest. So I've made that one a little bit heavier, so I have to take less material off of those. So I'm going to start a bit of a chart here and, um, and just write down my weights. And then what I'm going to do is take any weight uh, just off um, this part. This, is, this makes logical sense. It's the bit that's spinning around it. You know, up to 7,000 revs a minute. Um, you wouldn't take any off the piston, obviously. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get going. I'm not going to show you what uh, using a die grinder looks like. I'll bring you back when we're all equal and ready to go into the block. Okay, I've set you up to have a quick look at installing one of these pistons. I've already uh, done a trial run on cylinder number one, which uh, taught me a little bit. So, first and foremost, this is the ring compressor. There's heaps of oil in there. Um, the next step is just to make sure these rings and channels are soaked. 
So um, I'm not worrying too much about ring orientation while I do that. I'll set the rings up uh, before they go into the compressor. When I say set them up, uh, they, the, the spring gaps or spring yeah, gaps, ring gaps, need to be offset against each other. So I'm going to do sort of a 120 degrees because uh, there's three rings. 120 gives you 360, um, which is what I'm doing right now. Maybe off camera, can't really see. So, um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Oil control ring doesn't have the same requirement. Okay. Ring compressor, I'll bring that into the equation. And it's got a little uh, tool, which I need to find. So I'm going to set this so that there's a bit of a little bit of piston skirt hanging out the bottom to start things off. Important that it uh, scrolls together nice and straight. You can see that's nice, not nice and straight. If I can get one more click out of it, that'll be where I need to be. Just gently tap it in. Okay, so I'm not... Now I'm going to be looking for the conrod. Seems to be coming down straight. Check. See what the conrod's doing. All right. So that's in. Let's see what the conrod's doing here. Yeah, we're good. It's um. Um, before I push too far in, I'm going to swivel this around so you guys can see it. Hopefully, that's given you some image. Yep, it's all right. So, there's your um. There's your bearing in there. Bit of assembly lube, crank journal as well. And this is going to come down here further. I might need to push on the other side. You'll notice there's no risk of um, bolts to score the, uh, the crank as it comes down. These are the ARP bolts. So one and two and four. And this is the, um, the tang in the bearing. Uh, these go opposite. So it'll go, that's number three, it's not the right one. One sec, no, that's number four. That's all good. Four dots, I thought I saw three. I did see three. There's three punched in the side. Don't know what's going on there. But these have all been, as you saw, properly balanced. Oh, sorry, I didn't make any comment on balancing. Yeah, I got them to uh, within half. Um, half a gram which for this application is absolutely fine. I, just, I was walking the tightrope, I think, I suppose in my words, walking a tightrope um, around removing too much material. I really 
a couple of grams is quite a lot of material. So yeah, I just thought rather than create too much issue that way. And there we go. So that's I'm not going to tighten them all down. Just going to hold them in. And uh, I'll get some of this um, assembly lubricant on, on these before I tighten them down. So folks, that's, um, that's how you get one of those in without too much drama. There's always a little bit of drama, but that's, uh, that's it. So I'll get, get in and uh, do the other two. All right, so the last job is to torque these down to 35 foot pounds. Uh, or 25.1 newton meters. Okay, so I've got um, some assembly lubricant on these threads. And I'm having to use a small uh, torque wrench. The other one doesn't go down as low. Yeah, I invested in pretty expensive rod bolts. These are broadly considered to be the best you can get. I did look at the, um, when deciding that, you really shouldn't use, reuse rod bolts, but these are the old ones, and it just looks like the threads were pulled in a slightly different direction. So um, they're probably stretched anyway, so. So I don't reuse them. These were a couple hundred bucks. Which is pretty crazy. Almost the price of a set of pistons. You can see the bit of weight I took off this one. And this one. This is the end of this uh, short clip. I'm going to um, resume the next one with, um, it's probably going to be Model T. I received a, um, received a box of parts for the axles. So uh, that's ready to continue. Okay, so uh, I'm going to leave you guys there. I'll talk down these other two, and uh, and that will be the bottom end complete. Still, still turn freely. Yep, lovely.